Yes, guys, welcome to the Jamie Teachy YouTube show. We are joined by a very special guest. This is his debut on FBL YouTube. It's Dylan Chai, all the way from Ireland in the house. Dylan has been in the top 10 a couple of times this season in terms of overall rank. Currently ranked at number eight, Dylan. Welcome to the channel. How you doing, mate? Thank you, Jamie. I'm good. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. And the biggest headline for me is you've not owned Haaland at all this season. It's been crazy. <laughs> um, the, some of the feedback on Twitter has been mad. Um, but it's been really fun. This is the best spot I've had on FBL. I can't lie. And everyone's tagging along asking questions. So I'm happy to share the story. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, look, we're here for your team selection. It was great to see official FPL retweeted a thread you wrote about going without Haaland. And playing your own game is, is the big thing, right? For you, you play your own game and you've had big, big rewards. And when we see your team selection for game week um, 18, I think we can... We can see that. We can see you're playing your own game throughout. So let's have a look at it and start with your selection. This is, of course, a blank game week. We've got no Man City in Brentford. Um, you are fresh off a wild card, I should add. So again, oh, back to God. playing your own game. You've held your wild card this long. Talk us through the through the choice of holding your own wild card. Um, I suppose it's sad they call me crazy. Uh, I was like, yeah. two million in the world, and in all my mini leagues, all my mates are bantering me. Um, but I took it on the chin and um, sucked my guns, and with no harm, somehow. Um, we just kept going. I suppose I was able to hold my wild card when everyone was um, wild card in game of eight, game of nine, game of ten. Yeah, um, it's hard to wild card when you're doing well. So it was easy for me to hold on to the left. And I suppose a few injuries last week kind of made me want to pull the trigger a bit earlier than I wanted. I wanted to leave it as late as possible, but I suppose it kind of worked out. We had a good game week last week, seventy-one points. I was happy with that. Yeah, I mean, we can see your wild card on screen, like game week eight nine and ten you were ranked in the world 10th 11th and 60th and that's the window myself included and many of you watching you would have wild carded around that window of eight to ten and you obviously you just didn't need to so you've held it late you went last exactly, week yeah. so far it was a success a big green arrow um let's have a look at how you set up then for that blank game week and guys if you are enjoying this watch then do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel thank you team let's have a look then double Double Villa defence, if you like. So you've got Martinez in goal and you've gone Pau Torres at the back of one of your, your five defenders this week. We've gone for a Christmas tree formation. We're going to show you a 5-4-1. <laughs> That's because of your Man City benchings, Foden and Alvarez, right, and obviously yeah. Jimenez uh, with the red card. So let's start with Aston Villa defence then. You've seen a lot in recent um, weeks. You've seen clean sheets mm. against City and Arsenal. You've seen enough to go. You Aston want to back Villa look unbelievable this season. And especially yeah. at home. Sheffield United double up. Looks beautiful than Myers anyway. Um, I'm just praying that Pau Torres is fit. He came off eight second last week, so hopefully he'll be ran. Um, if he's injured, I'll probably be doing Pau to concert. Who's he though? Interesting. And Martinez in goal. Um, have you had much success with goalkeepers this season? Because those like yeah. me that uh, have struggled with goalkeepers. I think I've had um, four clean sheets so far, which is a lot. You'll take that to like everyone else. Yeah. Um, at the start, I had uh, Johnson. Now, if I kept him all the way through, I'd be doing fairly well. But then I moved him on to Sanchez and then um, he only got a hold two weeks ago. I think it was 14 pointer. So that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And then Martinez does feel like that kind of set and forget option. We we try and be smart with saving money and going for 4.2 Areola or Turner at four. But you just don't get the points. With Martinez, you can you can kind of sleep easy knowing you're going to get some six to eight pointers every now and then. Exactly. And with the Bravk on the bench, like for home games and Newcastle, you can yeah. always just um, interchange them. You know what I mean? So it's quite good. Love that. Um, if you can hear my daughter screaming in the background, by the way, she is also pumped that I've got a top 10 manager on the channel. <laughs> um, let, let's go to Liverpool defence. You've got Trent and Virgil van Dijk. I mean, straight away, you got double clean sheet against Man United. Virgil That's could have cool. had a header from a well, Trent yeah. corner. That would have been a massive Every combo. Every week that happens as well. You it's could have been world number one if that got it. I swear to God, yeah. Uh, there's a fella that's number, number three in the world, actually. He's the same partnership. But I would be very close to number one. Um, but yeah, Trent, Trent this season has been amazing. I said this since game week one. He unfortunately got injured. Um, but he's almost too good to have. It's like playing with mm -hmm. six midfielders. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Van Dijk, he's just, you know, he's going to play 90 minutes and with fixture congestion, like, he wants someone that's nailed. And he's really good on, like, quarters and free kicks that Trent whips in. So it's kind of a two-in-one package you come together, like. Yeah, and those Liverpool clean sheets could continue over the festive break. So nice differential in itself to have a Liverpool defender for some. I've got Simakas, but many watching won't have a Liverpool defender. You've got 
spent big. You've gone Virgil and Trent, yeah. but you've got the Haaland money to spend at the moment. We'll talk exactly, about yeah. what you might do for the second half of the season. But of course, you've got no Haaland all season, so you've always had money. Pedro mm-hmm. Porro, um, up next, he's been the most in demand def- defender in the game. I think yeah, more sure. managers bought him than any other defender in recent weeks. Um, being a Spurs fan, I watch him every single week. It's very easy for me. I, he's been fairly good. At the start, I can't lie, I had my doubts with Pedro Porro, but He's really yeah. up his game this season, and uh, I'm very happy with him. I mean, maybe there is some Spurs bias, but <laughs> at the end of the day, he looks great. He's on set pieces and um, great option in FPL, in my opinion. How do you compare him and Adoji in terms of FPL? Because Poro is more expensive and he is on the set pieces, but in terms of open play threat, there's not a huge amount between them, and Adoji is cheaper. Obviously, he's picking up more yellows, Adoji, um, but still a good buy in itself, right? Is there an argument to say you could look at double 100%. Spurs defence? I consider that a wildcard. I really do like Teddy Dogi. I think he's going to become one of the best in the league. Um, and the fullbacks seem to be coming a bit more inverted. They have no problem running by. I think they're both great options. But for me, Paro um, edges it because he's on quarters and some free kicks. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, there's also some long pass on him. He's unbelievable at that he, point. He does. <laughs> I watched the Doji in um, uh, Serie A and it's looks great but both of them technicians Poro and Adoji straight away you go they're very good te- technically exactly yeah. um, Cole Will to round off the back five then you won't be playing a back five many weeks but this week you've got Cole Will good shout on wildcard you've, you're back in Chelsea for some clean sheets over the next few because the fixtures are so good in, and uh, spoiler alert you've got Cole Palmer as well so two Chelsea players um, yeah originally before I wildcard the plan was to have um, double Chelsea Sanchez and Cole Will. Right, well, obviously, it didn't, it didn't go my way. Um, you like a double up at the back then because you've got double uh, Villa, you've got double Liverpool, and you were looking at double Chelsea, so you quite like going all in in the defense. Is that fair? Saying that during the start of the season, it was more so just um attacking fullbacks, it was a double Trent and Trippier, I think. Right, so, uh, it's something like that. Um, but yeah, as of now, I think it's great because we've had very little clean sheets, but as you can see from yesterday, like the United game. Some of our come true Chelsea as well. So Chelsea have great fixtures, so they look like they're gonna maybe get some clean sheets. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea do look good. Chelsea do look good. And look, uh, we don't need to speak about Cole Palmer. We know why you've got him. Most managers watching, I think, will have Cole Palmer. If you don't, then do consider it. We don't like to tell players how to pick uh, who to pick on this channel, but Cole Palmer surely has to be one. Um, um, for the price, probably the best option. I'm best with you there. Yeah. For, yeah. I I I agree. Um, Saka in the midfield. You got you. This is where the big guns start coming in. Um, let's talk about Saka. But again, another double double up combo because we're going to talk about Jesus and Saka in the same phase here because you've gone with Jesus up top. So you don't have a Darwin. You don't have a Solanke. You don't have a Watkins. You've gone Gabriel Jesus, who straight away has rewarded you. Yeah, and um, I suppose the numbers for Saka haven't been great this season. I see a lot of talk about Saka, but. I mean, if he's on penalties and going to play 90 minutes, it was almost hard to get rid of him because I've built so much team value up on him. I yeah. kind of wanted to get rid of him well, kind of. Um, Gabriel Jesus, he's been a great pick so far. I, I always thought Gabriel Jesus is a good choice. Um, he's the last on the striker now and he's going to play most games, like almost every single game. And he links play so well. He's vital to what they do. Uh, and he a- actually has a really good record against Liverpool as well. So <laughs> hopefully he can get a brace or something. I like that. I like that. Um... You've got double Spurs. We've mentioned Poro. Of course, you've got Sonny. You have to have Sonny. He's playing so, so well. Um, he'll obviously go off to the Asia Cup. Salah for sure. will obviously go off to AFCON. Let's drop both of them in for your, your player 10 and 11. You've got Salah. You've got Son, as expected. Are you planning to sell these guys for the AFCON and Asia Cup? For sure. I think so, yeah. I've been the no Hallam guy so far, but I might have no choice but to get the big man in. Um, it might have to be Salah to maybe... I was thinking Brennan Johnson. Um, I'm a Spurs fan, so yeah. Um, but then doing maybe like Alvarez to Haaland, and then maybe dropping Son down to Bowen, something like that. Oh, nice! You've got a plan already in place. Of course, you have a plan. You're <laughs> the top ten in the world. You've got a spreadsheet just like I do. Um, okay, what about Kulu? Have you looked at? Because you mentioned Brennan, like Kulu and Rashardson, good picks, midfield picks. But you're spending more money Great than Brennan. Um, yeah, I think Brennan Johnson has a lot to show. To be honest. You could pick anyone out of the Spurs from four, Kudu, Brennan, Richardson, and Son. Obviously, yeah. Son's going now. But I think three of those will have um, more impact. Like, I don't think Spurs will slow down because in February, um, Madison will be coming back. And uh, 
5th of January, I think Paul O'Keefe said that Van der Ven is going to be back. So that will make a massive difference. Yeah, good point. Good point. Okay, back. Uh, that's your 11. We'll talk about subs very quickly. You've got Dubravka, perfect yeah. backup keeper. You went Raul Jimenez, you were unlucky there. But again, cheap enabler. And then you've got Foden and Alvarez. So, so you're, you're happy, you think, benching them this week? Or do you think you'll replace one of them this week? I'm unsure, but I think that they could be very good differentials because no one seems to have City assets. They're yeah. not playing well, don't get me wrong, but I think they could be the difference now coming into game week 19, um, especially with people looking to get Haaland that could even triple up on them. So it's yeah. a good opportunity. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same with Foden. And we still don't know about that double game week. The announcement between Brentford yeah, and Man City's exactly. cancelled fixture in 18 for the Club World mm -hmm. Cup could drop into a 21, 22, 23. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Final thoughts then with captaincy. Your Sonny plays at home to Everton. You're a Spurs fan. Um, um, Salah plays Arsenal at home. Tougher fixture, but it is at Anfield. At the moment, are you thinking Salah? You've got the armband on Salah on your bus team? You think I'm thinking change? Salah. I think, um, look, Salah's probably the biggest game player in the league. Um, yeah. He loves playing against all the big boys. Saying that, obviously, black last week. Or, I don't know, some things at Anfield never change. And I prefer him over a son because... Everton's Everton are just going to sit back, play eleven behind the ball. Um, I don't think Son will get much shine in the left from that. But you never know. I mean, that's not to say he's a bad option at all. I just prefer Salah. I think. Yeah, I love that, Dylan. Thank you for sharing your team. That was awesome. Do go and check Dylan out on Twitter, guys. If you're not already following him, go do so. It's at FPL underscore Chai C H A I. If listening on podcast, go check him out as well. And stay tuned for more content this week and throughout the festive period. See you later.